but let's get into the the impact this had on the land and on the climate system. So we have n- over a hundred years or so, 90% of the indigenous populations disappeared. Uh, and y- there was a pretty dramatic and measurable change in the global climate system. Um, how did, y- how, d- how were those records? Uh, how, how did you get that information on how the, the climate shifted, like carbon emissions, et cetera? Like what data were you using in that? Yeah. So, um, so we took, um, from the first uh, outbreak on uh, in Mexico, in central Mexico, that's the 15, um, 21, there was a big small bo- bo- documented uh, smallpox uh, outbreak. Uh, that That's what we took as the starting point for the um, the population event on the mainland, because it happened obviously in um, the Caribbean and Hispaniola much earlier. That's assumed by 1504, it's been basically nearly nearly empty, <laughs> which is mad. Um, so, but with, with um, uh, so then the epidemic spread fairly rapidly. So we have 1524 already uh, reports that the uh, Incan uh, king fell ill at that time. So within four years, you you know you go from all Mexico down to the Inca kingdom. So um, uh, so this depopulation happened fairly quickly, and um, we then looked at uh, records um, from from uh, from charcoal records in the in the, in the soil. We looked at uh, pollen data that tells you basically if you if you had a um, before that you had like a, a pollen uh, a, a data that shows lots of mice or quinoa in the in the, in the soil, and then it shows like a high charcoal record. So that means it's lots of fire and in the tropics. We, it's fair to assume that most of the uh, burning is is um, anthropogenic and not um, not natural. Um, uh, so that's all site specific. So we looked at different sites um, and um, and found that uh, you know that forest and uh, and then and un- like yeah forest basically re- returns um, and all takes basically the uh, the anthropogenic signal. And uh, and from that, then we can piece together, you know, how fast this um, reforestation event uh, happened. And um, in order to calculate the the CO2 uptake from that, we used um, data that for, uh, present day data from uh, from the Amazon. So they have uh, forest plots where they where they measure. A, from a disturbance state all over, so basically where, where, where forests been just you know uh, for lower biomass content to returning back to a natural state um, through like forest succession and uh, and how much carbon has been taken up by that, and then we also did that for Mexico. So we uh, we combined these estimates and we obviously did also for North America because also tropics and this biomass is much lower. So you have to factor in. You can't really you can't really use um, the same the same uh, carbon uptake as you would use for say for the Amazon. You can't apply that to to North America, right? So uh, you have to use all these different estimates, and we combine them for each of our regions. We had like uh, our regions were North America, um, Mexico, Central America, um, the Caribbean, Inca Kingdom, and the and Amazonia as a as a as a broad region. Um, and we combined all of our carbon uptake estimates for all these regions, and then to calculate basically um, uh, how big this drawdown of CO2 would be. Um, and uh, we then looked in the end of the um, ice core records to look what CO2 did at the time, and we see there is a, a dip, uh, quite a pronounced dip, in atmospheric CO2 at around 1600. Um, and uh, that would match fairly well, but it could also be the oceans, right? So the oceans take up CO2. So uh, a study in 2015 quite conclusively showed that this uh, drop in CO2 is uh, caused by an increase in um, in land carbon uptake. So you, you could isotope analysis, and then and that that then basically singles out that the land was responsible for that. Um, so that matches fairly well with, with the hypothesis that the uh, increased carbon uptake in the Americas could cause that. Um, now, but there are other, you know, alternative um, theories why why we see such a um, land uptake, and then that's the reason um, 
And the interesting bit here is then, because we're in the little ice age at the moment, right, at that time where temperatures generally are cooler, uh, more so in the northern hemisphere than in the southern hemisphere, there are uh, um, reconstructions vary between the things, uh, between these two uh, hemispheres. Um, but in general, it's globally it is cooler. And um, one hypothesis is that with cooler temperatures, um, uh, the uh, soil uh, emits less CO2 um, into the atmosphere than um, plants would take up through photosynthesis. So uh, basically, you know, what happens usually in the terrestrial carbon cycle is, in simplest terms, is uh, trees take up um, CO2, leaves fall into the ground, you know, accumulate carbon, the carbon in the leaves falls in the ground, gets buried, buried um, bacteria then process that and breathe that CO2 back into the atmosphere. Um, that would be like a, a simple carbon cycle. Um, but now, uh, these bacteria don't breathe as much when it's cold, uh, so their their productivity slows down. That means uh, you would also have a uh, an increase in in in, in, in carbon uptake just from that. Um, but then there is the question of what caused the the cooling at that point, this extreme cooling, because that's the coldest part of the ice age. Uh, what caused that little what caused that cooling at that point? Um, volcanic eruptions might play a, a role, uh, but they happened slightly later in the temperature reconstruction that we looked at and um, solar fluctuation does not match that that would be later again so it's um so the co2 is quite a uh, plays quite a considerable role and then there was another study by people from edinburgh um who showed that um the, there is a fingerprint or like there is a signature of co2 cooling in there and uh and that then really gave us then you know the hope or like the courage to to tie these two things together and come up with the idea that um, it could be that the great dying is responsible for the initial cooling, and um, then we have the the cooler temperatures that are cooler than the normal little ice age, and that will then um, cause this feedback in the bacteria as breathing out less CO2. And that then together basically um, is responsible for most of the drop in CO2 that we see. So it's a it's a it's a combination of factors. It's not just humans, or it's not just natural. You have to combine these two hypotheses to actually explain the dip.